This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Gesine. The Consolation of Philosophy by Anicius Manlius Severinus Boethius. Translated by H. R. James. Book Three. True Happiness and Falls Section 2 and Song 2 The Bent of Nature Section 2 For a little space she remained in a fixed gaze, withdrawn, as it were, into the august chamber of her mind. Then she thus began. All mortal creatures in those anxious aims which find employment in so varied pursuits though so they take many paths, yet strive to reach one goal, the goal of happiness. Now, the good is that which, when a man has got, he can lack nothing further. This is which is the supreme good of all, containing within itself all particular good, so that if anything is still wanting thereto, this cannot be the supreme good, since something would be left outside which might be desired. Tis clear, then, that happiness is a state perfected by the assembling together of all good things. To this state, as we have said, all men try to attain, but by different paths. For the desire of the true good is naturally implanted in the minds of men. Only error leads them aside out of the way in pursuit of the false. Some, deeming it the highest good to want for nothing, spare no pains to attain affluence. Others, judging the good to be that to which respect is most worthily paid, strive to win the reverence of their fellow citizens by the attainment of official dignity. Some there are who fix the chief good in supreme power. These either wish themselves to enjoy sovereignty or try to attach themselves to those who have it. Those, again, who think renown to be something of supreme excellence, are in haste to spread abroad the glory of their name, either through the arts of war or of peace. A great many measure the attainment of good by joy and gladness of heart. These think it the height of happiness to give themselves over to pleasure. Others there are, again, who interchange the ends and means, one with the other in their aims. For instance, some want riches for the sake of pleasure and power, some covet power either for the sake of money or in order to bring renown to their name. So it is on these ends, then, that the aim of human acts and wishes is centred, and on others like to these, for instance, noble birth and popularity which seem to compass a certain renown, wife and children which are sought for the sweetness of their possession, while as for friendship, the most sacred kind indeed, is counted in the category of virtue, not of fortune, but other kinds are entered upon for the sake of power or of enjoyment. And as for bodily excellences, it is obvious that they are to be ranged with the above. For strength and stature surely manifest power. Beauty and fleetness of foot bring celebrity. Health brings pleasure. It is plain, then, that the only object sought for in all these ways is happiness. For that which each seeks in preference to all else, that is, in his judgment, the supreme good. And we have to find the supreme good to be happiness. Therefore, that state, which each wishes in preference to all others, is in his judgment happy. Thou hast, then, set before thine eyes something like a scheme of human happiness, wealth, rank, power, glory, pleasure. Now Epicurus, from a sole regard to these considerations, with some consistency concluded the highest good to be pleasure, because all the other objects seem to bring some delight to the soul. But to return to human pursuits and aims, man's mind seeks to recover its proper good, 
in spite of the mistiness of its recollection, but, like a drunken man, knows not by what path to return home. Think you they are wrong who strive to escape want? Nay, truly there is nothing which can so well complete happiness as a state abounding in all good things, needing nothing from outside, but wholly self-sufficing. Do they fall into error who deem that which is best to be also best deserving to receive the homage of reverence? Not at all. That cannot possibly be vile and contemptible, to attain which the endeavours of nearly all mankind are directed. Then is power not to be reckoned in the category of good? Why can that which is plainly more efficient than anything else be esteemed a thing feeble and void of strength? or is renowned to be thought of no account. Nay, it cannot be ignored that the highest renown is constantly associated with the highest excellence. And what need is there to say that happiness is not haunted by care and gloom, nor exposed to trouble and vexation, since that is a condition we ask of the very least of things, from the possession and enjoyment of which we expect delight? So then, these are the blessings which men wish to win. They want riches, rank, sovereignty, glory, pleasure, because they believe that by these means they will secure independence, reverence, power, renown, and joy of heart. Therefore, it is the good which men seek by such diverse courses. And herein is easily shown the might of nature's power, since Although opinions are so various and discordant, yet they agree in cherishing good as the end. Song 2. The Bent of Nature How the might of nature sways all the world in ordered ways, how resistless laws control each less portion of the whole. Fain would I in sounding verse on my pliant strings rehearse. Lo, the lion captive ta'en, meekly wears his gilded chain. Yet, though he by hand be fed, though a master's whip he dread, if but once the taste of gore wet his cruel lips once more, straight his slumbering fierceness wakes, with one roar he bounds he breaks, and first wreaks his vengeful force on his trainer's mangled course. And the woodland songster pent, in forlorn imprisonment. Though a mistress lavish care, store of honeyed sweets prepare, yet if in his narrow cage, as he hops from bar to bar, he should spy the woods afar, cool with sheltering foliage. All these dainties he will spurn, to the woods his heart will turn, only for the woods he longs, pipes the woods in all his songs. To rude force the sapling bends, while the hand its pressure lends. If the hand its pressure slack, straight the supple wood springs back. Phoebus in the western main sinks, but swift his car again, by a secret path is borne to the wanted gates of morn. Thus all are things seen to yearn, in due time for due return, and no order fixed may stay save which in the appointed way joins the end to the beginning in a steady cycle spinning. End of Book 3, Section 2 and Song 2 Recorded by Gesine in March 2007